Well, the days are long, and the hot sun beats down on the crowded beaches and lush farmlands of central Jersey. It's when the nation's top drag racers come to Madison Township Raceway Park on Old English Town Road in Old Bridge, New Jersey. The 12th Annual Summer Nationals are in progress. With $510,000 in prize money, more than 600 contestants from the country over are taking part. And with tickets at $15 a piece, there are more than 30,000 fans on the grounds here today. Hello, everyone. I'm Chris Economaki at the start line at Raceway Park. And if you like cars, there's something here for everyone. From Grandma's Coupe with a chalk number on the windshield to exotic fuel-burning specials that hit 250 miles an hour at the end of the quarter-mile strip. And uh-oh, what's this? A Rolls-Royce? Why, there's not a category for this model, which may be the most expensive car on the ground. And it's Reggie Jackson, Yankee Slugger. Reggie, when they told me you were going to be on our show, I was really surprised. What brings you here? Well, I think if you could uh, take a look at me uh, in the off-season, you can find me anytime I can get to a racetrack. I'm going to go down there and, and meet the boys because I know a lot of the guys. I've raced before, and I just love being around the Chris. You're deeply into drag racing. How long ago did you get started? Well, I got involved about 10 to 12 years ago. I raced an A Street Roadster, and we run on the world record at 920 and 148 a long time ago, back, like I said, in 70, 71. But just as recently as Wednesday night, uh, a while back there, I took my big block Chevelle. I've got a 1970. They call it the muscle car. It's an LS6 with a 454, a four-speed and 456 gears. I drove it right in with street tires, run it right through the muffers. They had an all-comers meet. I flat shifted the gears and had a good time and just felt like I was kind of back in the saddle again. I really enjoyed it. Well, Reggie, if you weren't <laughs> such a good baseball player, you'd probably be up there in the top fuel, funny car, pro stock categories, the categories we're going to be concentrating on today. How do you see it? Well, I don't know if, that, um, I don't know if I'm that good to be in, uh, riding in a seat in one of these funny cars or one of these rails, but I will say that since I've been involved and been getting back into it and I'm talking to Ray Beadle and guys like Prodome and, of course, talking to Glidden who was a pro stock class, one of my favorites, I'm kind of a fan of his. They both have told me, even though it's two different classes, funny car and pro stock with Glidden, they've said that the field is narrowed down. There's not really a superstar anymore, and just it's just about anybody's pick because everybody seems to be running so well here in 1981. Well, in funny car racing this year, no one has been able to win twice, and in top fuel, Shirley Muldowney, the queen of the drag strip, is looking for a third world championship. Earlier today, Chris talked to the lady, Shirley Muldowney, 1980s world champion top fuel driver, about her attitude here at the Summer Nationals. The pressure's on now, and we're good when we're under the pressure. And the pressure was on for Shirley, for after losing two engines during the week, she was only 11th fastest among the qualifiers. And then earlier today, in the very first round of top fuel, she came up against a veteran Texan, Jody Smart of San Antonio, who stopped the clock's third fastest. Two engines, Chris, $22,000 a piece. Those are what I call expensive rides. 2,500 horsepower each in each one of these cars. The start is so very important when you're running under six seconds flat. Shirley came here concerned. Despite winning four of her last six starts, she had dropped to second in the point. Off they went, dead even. Down the track, dead even. But towards the end, Smart moved ahead. You said it, Chris, a great race. 1,320 feet, 245 miles an hour. 5.82 for Jody Smart, 5.88 for Shirley Muldowney. And as you can see right there, going so fast, those cars are blur. And he just wins by a couple of wheel lengths. And in drag racing parlance, Shirley has been put on the trailer. And it's back to Mount Clemens, Michigan for the world champion. Coming up next, the quarterfinal for funny car the blue max one of the more colorful cars in drag racing driven by raymond beetle a 37 year old texas businessman and a lover of fine wine he comes up against mike dunn at 23 the youngest of the 16 finalists he's from bellflower california he qualified sixth fastest chris i say the youngster mr dunn has his hands full here he's going against the, the veteran here Raymond Beadle in the near lane here in the Blue Max car. A qualifying time of 5.86, and I mean that's flying. Two-time world champion, gets, and Beadle has trouble at the line, and Dunn smokes his tires. Neither could have won against a good opponent. So Dunn wins it, and Beadle's car, with mechanical trouble, never really got off the line. So that sets the field for the semifinal. Don Perdum versus Kenny Bernstein, and Dale Armstrong against Mike Dunn. And another star leaves early. 
The 50-yard line or behind the dugout seats in drag racing are close to the starting line. Let's take a look at that remarkable place. There are three electric lights in each lane. On the left is the pre-stage light, in the middle, the staging light, and on the right, the starting light. The first thing, the cars move into the pre-staging area, breaking that beam. That sets the light on the Christmas tree on the right, pre-stage. Then they move forward into the stage, and then when the green light goes on, they're off. That's when the clock starts. As that starting light flashes, the drivers let out the clutch and race down 1,320 feet or a quarter mile. When they get to the finish line, the clock stops and records elapsed time, or ET in drag racing parlance. There's another set of figures in everyday use in drag racing, top speed, which is really top end speed. There's a speed trap that begins just before the finish line and ends just after the finish line. And the cars are clocked entering and leaving this. And this run through this small area determines the top end speed. Well, it's 20 car semi-final time now. One of the more popular categories of the sport. It's going to be Kenny Bernstein against Don Perdum in the first one. Dale Armstrong against Mike Dunn. It's an interesting class, Reggie. Almost as fast and just as powerful as the top fuel cars. And they look very similar to the cars you and I drive on the street every day. Okay, Perdum's rival is Kenny Bernstein, an interesting guy from Texas. A little bit ago, Reggie had a chance to ask him about today's conditions. Do you have any problems with the weather, with the humidity, with the heat? Do you do anything different with the motor? Yeah, you have to. In other words, the uh, atmospheric conditions always uh, tell us what we have to do to make these cars run. Right now, with it being so hot and humid, it's hard to make a lot of horsepower. Now what's happened to us also is the racetrack has kind of gone away on it. The heat's kind of gotten to it. It's made it a little slicker. So we've got a compound problem. We've got a, a tough way to make horsepower, but yet the track won't take a lot. So we have to be very careful and very touchy right now. Okay, Bernstein is in the near lane, Perdum in the far lane. Perdum at age 40 is Mr. Drag Racing. 30 national victories in a long career. And he's going for a win today that'll keep a streak alive that started nine years ago. He's won a race every year in the last nine years. There they go, and for some of the following, the yellow challenger scoots for home, and he pops the parachute, and for dumb wins it at 6.194, 230 miles an hour, and Kenny Bernstein goes back to Texas. So that sets up the second semifinal. Dale Armstrong against Mike Dunn. The winner of that one will meet Don Perdum in the final. Time for the second funny car semifinal. Mike Dunn, 23 years old of Bellflower, California, the near lane. His car, the Hawaiian Brent car. He goes against Dale Armstrong, a 39-year-old Torrance, California rider. Speed racer on his car. Interesting names, are right, Reggie? Interesting names, Chris, but the important thing here is the driving skill. So much brute power, 2,500 horsepower. The important thing, the touch in driving, the skills, the takeoff. And the takeoff, getting that power to the ground without spinning the wheels is the all-important thing. Armstrong in the far lane, a pro cop champ and has a dozen national victories, but in a lesser category. And Dunn brings his car to the line in the near lane. Stay. And Dunn's touch is too heavy. He spins and smokes the tires. And Armstrong scoots out to win it at 6.180, 231 miles an hour. It's a tough break for the youngster from Bellflower as the veteran from Tarns, California makes it to the final. He'll go against Don the Snake Perdom. And as our winner, Dale Armstrong, shuts off his engine for the obvious reason, Chris, at 10 gallons per quarter mile and $22 a gallon, I say that's smart reasoning. Money by speed, and it's pro stock time. First semifinal, David Hutchins against Frank Iaconio. Pro stock, a restricted class, Reggie. Minimum weight, the basic stock contoured body, and they must burn gasoline through carburetors, Chris. That doesn't give the builders much to work with. A pair of identical 1981 Camaros coming to the line, so it means the driver is everything in this round. Frank Iaconio here, he lives just 50 miles from the Strip in Totowa, New Jersey. Important fact because he is familiar with the track. And Hutchins, Fairfield, Illinois in the far lane. They're staged. Not quite. A little psychology here, making the other man wait. And off they go. Even Steven, it's a race. Side by side, down the stretch. Close, close, close. Who's it going to be? It's Iaconio in the near lane. 8.546, 157 miles an hour. Let's have another look. 
Look at that. 27 one hundredths of a mile per hour, the difference in speed, and 52 one thousandths of a second, the difference in time. Iaconio meets the winner of the Lee Shepard Bob Glinton matchup next. Earlier, Reggie had a chance to talk with Glinton's crew chief, his wife, Etta. We've uh, checked everything. We uh, also changed gas. We checked our fuel tank. We checked the fuel pressure of the regulators, everything. I understand that you do some driving, you do some working on the engine, you, you participate in everything with Dad here. Well, we there's just the two of us and plus the two kids, so everybody has to participate. Do you have that, you say you, you're looking for the good number to run and you're trying to get down around 8.30, 8.35, you're running 8.50s. Is there that much of a difference in just 30 hundredths of a second? Well, to us, 5 hundredths is a, is a mile. Uh, if we could pick up five, six, seven hundred, we would at least be in striking distance, so we'd feel a little better. A classic matchup. A southerner and a Chevrolet on Goodyear's versus a northerner and a Ford on Firestone. All the elements. On top of that, Chris, the number one and number two drivers of 1980. They usually meet in finals. They're off. Shepard lurches. Glint nose down. Close racing. Side by side. Down the strip. These two hard rivals. Wheel to wheel, but Shepard knows it's ahead. And wins it by a whisker. 8.513, 158 miles an hour. What did Edda say? She checked everything. They didn't check the driver. You see how close it was. The difference, five one hundredths of a second. Bob Glidden ran faster, and he had a better ET, but he went to sleep at the line. And so, Frank Iaconio meets Lee Shepard in the pro stock final. Gary Beck goes against Mark Oswald at the top fuel final, and Don Pradum faces Dale Armstrong in the funny car. And so there's some interesting final rounds coming up here at the 12th Annual Summer Nationals in New Jersey. Chris Akonabaki along with baseball great and now and then drag racer Reggie Jackson at Madison Township Raceway Park in New Jersey. It's the Summer National Drag Races with the Pro Stock Final coming up, matching Frank Iaconio and Lee Shepard. And moments ago, Reggie talked with Lee. You're going up against uh, Mr. Iaconio, who you say is an excellent driver. Uh, although you seem to be the favorite right here, you seem to be the top, top dog. Do you get concerned or worried about whether you get a little bit too confident? Uh, yeah, you can get too confident pretty easy. Uh, I just try to do the same thing every time and not really worry too much about who I'm up against because it, it doesn't really matter. Anybody can beat you if you're late on the light. How do you think you can beat them? To start with power? Oh, How are you going to go about it? The starting line, definitely. That would be the only way I could beat him. That's he's, got key. Little, he's got a little more power than I do. He has more power? Yeah, he does right now. Would there be a possibility of a red light? I doubt it. I hope not. Not for me, anyway. I have Cody on the near lane. Two years ago, he won here when his opponent red lighted. Here's Shepard in the far lane. They're both concerned about that start, Reggie. Chris Pitt talk has it that Lee Shepard has the more powerful car and Iaconio is the better driver. Let's see what happens. Okay, it's all going to be at the start here as they come into the stage here. Then they go off and Shepard lurches up and he red lighted. And Iaconio goes down the strip. Shepard is ahead, but he red lighted and it gives the victory to Iaconio. There'll be a party in Ottawa tonight. Well, let's take another look at that start, which cost Lee Shepard the $12,000 for a prize money. Here they come to the line. Watch the Christmas tree. Down low is where the red will go on. Watch the front bumpers of the two cars. Shepard on the right, Iaconio on the left. Shepard lifts up in the circle. The red light goes on, and first prize money goes to Iaconio. Now, Reggie's down there with Frank now. I know you're Reggie Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> At least let me see a nice smile on that face. Congratulations Thank to you. you. Thank you. Do you know that uh, Lee Shepard uh, red lighted? Saw. You saw him red light. Did you take it easy when you saw that, or did you try to put a good number down? I, I didn't. I took it easy a little bit, but, you know, I ran it pretty well through, you know, maybe a couple hundred or something. You ran an 851 with a four. Oh, I did? Yes. Oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> pretty good, I say that, Soup. Well, that's a little better than the last one. The last one was a 54, so I'm happy. Congratulations, Steve. Thanks. Thank you, Rick. Okay, now let's go back to the starting line and get a look at the funny car final as we take a look at Don the Snake Prudhomme making his burn in. Getting ready for the final against Dale Armstrong. Just a few minutes ago, Chris Economaki was down there talking to Dale. Dale, you look real busy. I'll only be a moment. You're a world champion in pro comp, but you've never won a funny car final. You're coming up the master, Don Prudhomme, a man with 30 wins. What do you think about the run? 
Oh, we're looking pretty good. Uh, I mean, we've got lane choice. I know Don's really tough, and I really respect him, but uh, I like racing guys like him because I'll really be up for it. I won't be late. What about the work you're doing, Dale? Is it taking your mind off the run, or is it a problem that you can't think about it? Which? No, actually, we've had a real good day. I mean, we've ran the four rounds now, and we've only used up a total of four pistons. Now, we take it apart every round, though, just to look at it to make sure. Well, you got a smile on your face. You look confident. Good luck to you. Thank you. Isn't it getting to be a pretty expensive ride out there for six seconds, 6.19 <laughs> seconds? I'm telling you. Yeah, you bet it is. Yeah, there's a fresh motor in it, and it's got to come all apart, too, and uh, put some new pieces in it. Getting ready to go up against the finals. You've been there many, many times before, and again, you've got to completely reconstruct your motor here, just except for the lower end. And as you say, it is kind of routine. Any different changes? It's starting to cool off a little bit. Uh, the track's starting to change on a little bit or anything like that, Don? Yes, Reggie. Uh, right now, we don't have lane choice, so I'll be over in the, uh, the right-hand lane, which isn't quite as good. So we're going to have to do some clutch adjustment and uh, just shoot our best shot. We could certainly use a big home run right now. <laughs> <laughs> good luck to you. Right. Get it back together. Hit the big one. Take a long look and watch it, and I'll watch the snake bite. There you go. Thanks. And why not lane choice, Reggie? Because in the semifinals, Armstrong ran a 6.18 and Perdome ran a 6.19. And Armstrong feels that that far lane is probably stickier. A three-time Pro Comp champion against Perdome, who has won four national championships. Seven titles here between these two men as they come to the line for the $12,000 first prize. Off they go, and it's even Steven. Hot. Armstrong's got trouble. His car breaks, and Perdum goes on to win victory number 31. It's his fourth win here at New Jersey and makes his career total 31. Continues a streak he started nine years ago of winning a national event every year. This is his first national victory of the year. And a special victory for Don Perdome because he and Dale Armstrong both work on their cars. A better driver and a better mechanic today. Don Perdome. As we take a look at the crew, I'm going down to talk to Don, Chris. A fine run for Perdome. Tough break for Armstrong. All right, Reggie, will be down in a minute, Don. And we'll be back with a word with Don Perdome and an exciting top fuel final. Reggie is down at the finish line with winner Don Perdome. I know this is a little unusual for you. This is the 31st time of being in the winner circle here. I really don't know what to say to you. But I'd like to say, you know, if the other guy hadn't broke, you probably wouldn't have won. Oh, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. No, we run a 6.07 in the bad lane at 2.41, so I think it was a pretty good run. You but, know you were coming on strong. Yeah, the crew uh, suggested on, on changing the uh, transmission, doing some things. The car said, hell, why not? Let's try it. And they hit it right on the head, and it really just worked great. Why did you feel you had to change gear ratio in the transmission or rear end? Well, Reggie, uh, the tracks, uh, you know, of course, there's two lanes, and they, and they look identical, but they're not. Um, uh, the right lane had a little bit more rubber buildup in it. It's slipperier. And going over the uh, track surface, the, the, the car has a tendency to get loose, building too much power. Mm -hmm. So, therefore, we just changed the ratio and make the engine work a little bit harder and not spend the time. Does he tell you guys all this, or do you tell him? They tell me. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Thanks, Reggie. And the preliminaries are out of the way now. It's the top fuel final. Former champion Gary Beck against Mark Oswald. And a few minutes ago, both Reggie Jackson and I had a chance to talk with the two final protagonists. You come in the final now against a fellow who's never really been in the finals. He ran a 599. You've co you're coming off a 574. Uh, you've got experience on your side. Then all of a sudden, this thing comes up. Can you get overconfident? Well, never. Uh, uh, this will be our first race with... Uh, Oswald, he's a uh, 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 very good driver. He's, uh, he's, he is new uh, somewhat to top fuel racing, but he's been drag racing for a few years. He's no rookie. So, uh, no, it's going to be a tight race for us, that's for sure. It's been a long, hot day, Gary. I'm going to get out of your way and let you go to work on your car. Yeah, I guess we better put some horsepower in it. 28-year-old Mark Oswald getting ready for his first final round in NHRA competition. Mark, there's an area of calm in your pit area here. Up in Gary Beck's pit, it's quite exciting. Have you ever taken on Gary Beck before? No, we've not really raced him in one of these deals yet. You know, he's won nine national events and is a former world champion. That sort of get to you? No, not really. He's plenty tough, but we'll run our own race. This is your first NHRA final, right? Right, correct. What's inside of you? Just love to do good here for a change. We've had a string of bad luck, transmission problems before, and everything's ironed out this weekend and working good. The motor's performed real good for us. You sound confident. Mm -hmm. I am. I, I know we'll make a consistent pass. It's going to take a good run to beat him, though. 
Gary Beck, a seasoned performer at age 40 in the far lane, takes on young Mark Oswald, 28. Reggie playing in Yankee Stadium for the first time, so to speak. I guess you could say that. Beck has been very consistent all day, Chris. He's going to be awful tough to beat. Has not had to make a lot of changes to his car, and he's fresh off a 574. Bet you Oswald's got butterfly. Waiting for the light. And off they go. Beck swivels a little bit. Oswald smokes his tires and Beck in the far lane. Ah, has engine trouble late in the run, but still gets to the line first. Unbelievable. Beck had problems, obviously, but he still beat Oswald. He get a 602, 221 miles an hour. Not too fast, Reggie. Well, not that fast mm -hmm. compared to what he's been running all day. You saw him spit some pistons out, blow his motor really toward the end of the race, but came on strong because he was going fast enough. As we see a happy crew getting ready to go down and pick up Mr. Gary Beck. Valuable points towards the World Championship and a check for $12,000 will go to Gary Beck here taking his helmet off. There were several supporting classes in this great meet of drag racing. Let's take a look at who the winners were. In pro stock motorcycle racing, it was Terry Vance of Santa Fe Springs, California outspeeding his rival. On the funny bikes, Terry Kaiser of Houston, Texas was top man. In the competition category, Jeff Cunningham from Wichita, Kansas was the winner. And in the top alcohol funny car, Ken Beanie, a many-time winner here, he's from Wadsworth, Ohio, was top man. In top alcohol dragster, Darrell Gwynn of Miami, Florida won at age 19. In the stock category, Mike Smith of Philadelphia did it in a station wagon. And in super stock, Pete Sansone of Troy, New York, another station wagon driver. And in the modified category, Larry Kopp of Baltimore, Maryland, rounded out our winner. Reggie, a super day of racing and a pleasure working with you. Let's just say I had that bottom of the ninth, bases loaded, two out, tie scores feeling all day long, Chris. I look forward to the next race. Okay, Chris Economaki and Reggie Jackson saying so long from Raceway Park.